The 1994 season was the 75th season in NFL history. For the first 74 years of the league, the scoring rules were the same as they'd always been. A touchdown is worth 6 points. After the touchdown, you get to try the extra point for one additional point. You can try a field goal worth 3 points, and on defense, if you stop a team in their own end zone, you can get a safety worth 2 points. The fundamental rules of football have been the same since 1912, when the field was shortened from 110 yards to 100 yards, and the amount of points scored for a touchdown increased from 5 to 6. But for the 75th season, there were two radical changes that were proposed. Two changes that would have changed the scoring rules in the NFL for the first time ever. The first one ended up getting passed, and is still in place today. For the 1994 season, the NFL implemented the two-point conversion. After a touchdown, a team had the option to go for two points from the two-yard line. This meant that the maximum number of points you would get on a drive increased from seven to eight. The two-point conversion had been around other leagues before, including the AFL, the NCAA, the CFL, and the USFL, so it made sense that it would come over to the NFL. I don't think anybody has a problem with the two-point conversion. You're not seeing any fan complain about the conversion being gimmicky and destroying the integrity of the sport. So that was the first rule change impacting the value of points. The second one? Oh boy. This feels like something that couldn't have possibly happened. This feels like something that couldn't have been seriously proposed by anybody in a position of power who had been around the sport. But here we were. Imagine a scoring system where field goals weren't worth three points. Instead, they were determined based on how far back you were when you kicked it. Because this crazy idea almost happened. This is the story of the time that the NFL tried to change the point value for field goals. This is the story of arguably the worst rule ever proposed in NFL history. I know what you're thinking about this rule. Why on earth would the NFL even consider this? How did we get to this point? Well, it had to do with the 1993 season. During the 93 season, kickers were becoming a bit too good. Over the course of NFL history, kickers had become gradually better and better as the seasons went on. Here's a graph showing the change in field goal percentage from 1938 until 1993. I'm guessing all the good kickers got drafted during World War II, because in 1943, the average field goal percentage across the league was an abysmal 23.5%. Field goals were hit more than 50% of the time for the first time during the 1954 season, and crossed the 60% threshold for the first time in 1972. But things were beginning to improve dramatically over the past decade. In 1986, the field goal percentage across the NFL was 68.2%. After that, it had been above 70% in the next seven seasons, and hit an all-time high of 76.6% during the 1993 season. Today, a kicker hitting 76.6% of his field goals would rank near the bottom of the NFL. But back in 1993, Commissioner Paul Tagliabue viewed this as a major problem. Kickers were becoming too good. It's part of the reason why the league moved the extra point back a few years ago. Kickers were hitting extra points at such a rate with over 99% accuracy that it just became boring. And from inside 30 yards, Kickers in 1993 hit on 93.8% of their kicks. Just seven years prior in 1986, this percentage was 89%. From 50 plus yards, kickers were hitting their kicks over 50% of the time. In 1986, they were doing this just over 35% of the time. And the big difference came in the 40 to 49 yard range. During the 1993 season, kickers in this range hit on over 61% of their kicks. In 1986, seven years before, this was just over 53% of the time. Kickers were getting good to a point where in the eyes of Paul Tagliabue, it was becoming boring. Too many games were being decided by field goals. Plus, the game was becoming more dull and more boring because of it. From 1983 to 1993, the number of touchdowns that were being scored in NFL games decreased by 22%, while the number of field goals that were being scored increased by 14% and half of the teams in the league were averaging fewer than two touchdowns per game. The two bye week system proposed in 1993 did not work. In the eyes of a lot of critics, the NFL was starting to lose its touch. It was becoming boring, stale, and predictable. It was becoming shallow and pedantic. 
So Commissioner Tagliabu knew that he needed to act. He needed to find a way to drive up scoring and increase offensive production. That's why the two-point conversion was proposed and eventually passed. That's why a whole bunch of rule changes were added in 1994, from kickoffs getting moved from the 35-yard line to the 30-yard line to increase starting field position, to teams getting the ball at the spot of the missed kick instead of the line of scrimmage on missed field goals, to the aforementioned two-point conversion. Some of these ideas were more radical than others. And one such idea was so radical that it would have altered the history of football forever. Around this time period, there was a sport that had flown under the radar for years, but was starting to creep up and become a predominant part of American culture. That sport was basketball. After years and years of the sport receiving minimal coverage, to the point where the NBA Finals were on tape delay, all of a sudden, basketball in the 1980s began to grow exponentially. You can credit that to a bunch of things, including the stars that the league got from Magic Johnson to Larry Bird to Michael Jordan. And you can credit that to an increase in offense, which came because of the implementation of the three-point line. Commissioner Tagliabu figured that much like the NBA implemented a three-point line to increase scoring, the best way to increase offense in the NFL would be if they implemented something similar. I'm not sure why they didn't try just making field goals harder, either by raising the height of the crossbar or by narrowing the goalposts, but in Tagliabue's eyes, he needed something radical to fix his boring and somewhat dying sport. Under his proposal, if a team kicked a field goal from inside 20 yards, it would be worth one point. If a team kicked a field goal from 20 to 40 yards, it would be worth two points. And if a team kicked a field goal from over 40 yards, it would be worth three points. The idea? get teams to stop taking chip shot field goals and encourage more teams to go for it on fourth down. No more automatic points. You had to earn everything you got. He also had another radical idea that I'm not going to dive too much into right now, where each team would get four timeouts instead of three. Because that's the best way to improve your boring sport. Make the games go on longer. But regarding this field goal proposal, it seems like something you'd see in an arcade game. Assigning a different point value for field goals based on the distance seems like a crazy idea. But is it a good one? Well, not really. I'm sure you can see a major problem with the system right off the bat. It's a system that encourages defenses to allow yards and discourages offenses from gaining yards. Let's say you have a 3rd and 15 on the 30-yard line. If you gain no yardage, it will be a 47-yard field goal worth 3 points. So the defense decides to play a soft zone, allowing the offense to pick up 9 yards so that's a 38-yard field goal worth 2 points. Now, if you're a receiver, do you intentionally drop the football so that you have a shot at that one extra point? Do you fumble backwards afterwards if you're close to the sidelines? Do you run backwards? It's an absolutely ridiculous system that encourages defenses to give up yards and discourages offenses from trying to get yardage if they're on the border of certain point values. Plus, imagine the crazy hijinks that would ensue when it comes to penalties. A team is lining up for a 38-yard field goal worth 2 points, and intentionally commits a false start or a delay of game to get back to 43 yards. Conversely, a team is lining up for a 43-yard field goal and intentionally jumps the snap unabated to the kicker so that it becomes a 38-yard field goal. It's a system where if there are no checks in place, Committing penalties is encouraged. The safety of the game is highly compromised once you start encouraging players to commit penalties. There's also the idea that by doing this, the game becomes highly gimmicky. There's something about this that just doesn't feel like football. The two-point conversion makes sense. Other leagues had adopted it with success, including the league that the NFL merged with. There was precedent behind it, and it makes sense to be able to say that you can leave the offense out on the field after a touchdown. Plus, it makes the end of games more exciting because a one-possession game is now 8 points instead of 7. The field goal proposal has no precedent behind it, hasn't been adopted by any other league, and it doesn't change the end of games with regards to how many points you can score on a drive. And there's something inherently weird about a game ending with a score of 1 to nothing, which could happen under this system. There are many cons to this proposal. Quite frankly, it's not very good. Commissioner Tagliabue shot for the stars with this one. He definitely thought outside the box. 
he said at a press conference prior to Super Bowl 28 that he wanted to de-emphasize field goals and re-emphasize touchdowns. And I guess this proposal does that. He also said at that press conference, do you want to reward the long kick, or do you want to reward the team that moves the ball? But obviously, if you've even watched one NFL game, you know that this proposal did not pass. While a bunch of rule changes got passed during the 1994 season, including the two-point conversion to change how scoring works, this was not one of them. Kickers are still improving year to year, but there's been no talk about bringing this rule proposal back, and for good reason. But it's one of those insane scenarios to think about. How does NFL history change if this rule is in place? What score lines change as a result? Just as an example, when the Jets beat the Colts in the 2010 wildcard round, the Jets were down by two points when Nick Folk lined up for a 32-yard field goal to win it with no time left. Under this proposal, that field goal would have merely tied the game. What would Rex Ryan and company have done in that situation? Fortunately, I don't think we have to worry about the NFL ever putting this rule in place anytime soon.